everyone. Uh, my name is Rina Fujino, a software engineer from CHIO team. So today I'm here to introduce the new feature available since our 0 0.10 release. So that is a firmware management support for child device for Cumulosity IoT. Many IoT devices uh, need firmware update regularly in their device lifecycle. With IoT Cloud Platform, uh, you can always check which firmware is currently installed in your IoT devices. And not only that, and also uh, you can apply a new firmware update to those devices. So supporting the firmware management feature is absolutely important for IoT device side clients uh, like CHIO. And gladly, now we have it for you. So to enable the firmware management feature, uh, firstly, we need to use Cumulosity. So let's check together now what Cumulosity offers for firmware update from their user guide. So, yeah. I'm going to switch to the community user guide. And here uh, you can find a section like managing device firmware. So what they are offering, first they have firmware repository. And in this repository, uh, you can create an, a firmware entry and providing the, some firmware information like name, version. And also um, you can upload a firmware file directly to Cumulosity or uh, providing an external URL. And once you created the entry, and this is available in your tenant, and then go to the, your device management and your uh, device. Uh, if your device is declared CHY underscore firmware as supported operations, then you're going to have this firmware tab in your device. Um, so this is really Cumulosity feature. So if the device wants to have some device management feature, the device always needs to declare which one uh, it's supporting. So in this case, CHY firmware for restart, CHY restart, and so on. And from this uh, device management, so you can create an operation to apply the firmware to your device. So to create an operation, so you need uh, this firmware repository entry, so which I explained in the previous section. So actually, so this is what Cumulosity is offering. And now let's take a look what we are offering. Okay, back to the slide and Yes, um, so now we know what Cumulosity offers. And then actually the firmware management feature, uh, so it's available for both main device and child device. However, in this presentation, uh, we would like to focus on only child device uh, because uh, this is what we are offering currently. So let's think about the flow and each component in the firmware update. So we need apparently three components, Cumulosity um, as a uh, IoT platform, and also the thing is device as main device and uh, child device. In this diagram, yes, there is only one child device, uh, but child device can be always more than one. And Cumulosity and the CNH device are connected over the internet. And the CNH device and the child devices are connected in the private network. So that key point is there's no direct connection between Cumulosity and the child devices. So the CNH device works as a proxy between cloud and the child devices. Then as per firmware operation, uh, we need a couple of steps between these three components. So that's why you see now many arrows in this diagram, uh, but we can divide uh, these arrows into two parts. And the first part, this part, is the responsibility of CHY firmware plugin. So we delivered this plugin in the 0 0.10 release. And this plugin is supposed to run on the Stingage device. And the other part, 
uh, is a responsibility of the child connector. Uh, this program child connector should be running on the child devices. So unfortunately, it is not a part of CNHIO itself because imagine it's totally different on the device how you can install the firmware. But don't worry, uh, we have an example program in our GitHub repository. And actually, I'm going to use the example Python script, which is available in the example repository in today's demo. So as I already mentioned demo in the previous slide, so I prepared a demo to show the firmware management feature in today's presentation. And here is my demo setup. So CH IO is installed and already running on the Raspberry Pi, and this one is already connected to the Cumulosity. And also I have other two devices, so one is laptop and the other is another Raspberry Pi and both are located in my home network and uh, child connect program is running on the both devices. So let's start the demo. Okay. Um, so this device uh, is the Raspberry Pi, which is connecting the Cumulosity. So this is a CHIO device. And of course, CH is installed, the version 0.10.0. .0. And also now we can confirm that this device is really connected to Cumulosity. Um, and yes, so the connection check to the Cumulosity is successful. And for the later usage, um, I'm sub so subscribing uh, or MQTT message on the main device, the edge device. And this device is another Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a so child device for this demo. And this child connect uh, program is running now. And also this is another device laptop, uh, the same. So the child connect program is running on there. Okay, so this is the device side setup. And now we can check the Cumulosity. So this ARPA 250 is my uh, CNC device. And having two child devices, one is laptop and the other is Raspberry Pi. And so first let's start with this laptop one. Uh, we can create a firmware operation. So I have already uh, created a couple of entries in the firmware repository. So that's why you can see the four entries here. So I'd like to install this version 1.0. The file itself is very lightweight, so just a simple text. And when I click install, an operation will be created. And I click install so that some status changes very quickly. And we can confirm that. So here, so I created the operation. Then afterwards, um, the operation status changed to executing and in the end changed to the successful. So something happened apparently. And also let's do the same thing for this Raspberry Pi, another child device. Apply the same, same version, this 1.0, then install. Yes, now also doing the same. So create it. Operation change executing and status successful and and also here so this is a uh, information of the um, currently installed firmware so it actually changed to this uh, version 1.0 so yeah this is a small set of demo and I think now you are curious what happened behind this demo then of course I'm going to explain now so back to the slides okay. Yep. So previous slide, I mentioned there are nine steps. So I'm going to explain from the step one. So this is a step one. So when you create a new firmware operation in Cumulosity, Cumulosity publishes a new smart list message and CH device uh, receives it. Yep. And this is a payload of the smart list message, one remarkable is this URL is a target from your files URL, so somewhere available in the internet. Then number two, uh, 
So CHIO device uh, downloads a firmware file from Cumulosity or the, some external location. And from the smart rest message, so now CHIO device knows from where to download the firmware file. Then after downloading, the file will be stored in the cache. And actually, this is a feature of CHI firmware plugin. So since having a cache, it avoids re-downloading the same file again. So imagine uh, you have multiple child devices and want to apply the same firmware to them. Of course, you don't want to download the same file again and again as per operation. So this cache feature is in very helpful for this situation. So then move on to the step three. And now the target file the firmware file is available inside the CHIO device, so the CHIO device can create a firmware update request to the child device. So this one is sent as the MQTT message in the payload is like this. Uh, ID, uh, this is assigned internally, and attempt, this is how many times the same request is sent. And name, version, obvious, and the SHA-256, uh, this is a checksum of the file itself so that you can verify if the file is correct after downloading. And the last one is the important URL. And this is the endpoint accessible in the local network. So most likely this parent IP part is like, for example, 192.168.68 uh, something. So the point is it's not like publicly available. So just local network, then you can access. Then, uh, the step four uh, is now uh, child device knows all necessary information to proceed the firmware update request. So the step four and the step five about updating the operation status to executing. And child device uh, should report uh, that a child device is now executing the request by MQTT. Then, um, CHIO device converts the message to the Cumulosity's format, so it's smart rest. So now the status of the operation in Cumulosity changed to executing. And one note uh, is this step is actually optional. Uh, if you skip this step and executing status uh, update to Cumulosity will be sent together with the successful failed status update message. So it's a, this, this eight and a nine. And then and step six. So now child device can download the file from your file from the CHIO device. Okay, then now child device has a file. So do the firmware installation. And after the firmware installation finishes, uh, child device reports the operation status to CHIO device uh, with a payload. If it is successful, very simple. If it is failed, also you can add the reason field, so why it failed. Then uh, CHIO devices, device uh, converts the operation up status update message to the Cumulosity's way, again, smartness. And now Cumulosity's operation status must be changed to either successful or failed. And if uh, some error occurs, uh, like onward steps, uh, then a CHIO device sends failure, operation failure to Cumulosity IoT with the corresponding the reason. Okay, so let's uh, check the demo's output again to confirm uh, if the demo worked as I explained now. So screen out and check it. Yep. So the step one uh, was to receive a smart risk message from Community IoT. So we have some uh, MQTT output. This is on the CNC device. And we run actually two operations. So one set of operations is this one. And this first message is the smart rest message to about this firmware update from Cumulosity. Okay, now CNC device received. And step two is the downloading the file. 
from this URL. And let's check it. So, so as I said, we have cache. So this cache is the file. Now it's downloaded from the demo, so I, we can check the timestamp. Uh, cache. Yes. So it's so very recent. It's created, so it has actually one more time difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so remember, so I actually created the two operations uh, applying the same firmware file to two different child devices. But now you see only one file here. So first operation, uh, actually the CNC device downloaded the file from Cumulosity. But for the second operation, since the same firmware file is required, it doesn't download. So just it's keep downloading and using this cache. And the step three is um, creating the firmware request to the child device. And the message is this one. And the step four is um, step four and five is uh, executing message to Cumulosity. So these two are corresponded messages. And step six, uh, downloading the firmware file from CHIO device. So we can check our child device connector output. So look at this. So here, so apparently uh, this child connector is downloading a file from the uh, CHIO device and the download was successful and stored somewhere. So step six was done. And step seven is insta installing a firmware file. So it does something. And then number eight and nine is um, sending the, again, operation status update. And these three messages are corresponding to that. So child connector sends a successful message. And then CHIO device converts to the smartest way. So this is a for successful, and this is updating the Cumulus inventory data. So which uh, uh, firmware file is currently installed. So yeah, it looks good. So now we confirm that um, the demo worked as I explained in with this diagram. So the this goes a summary. So this is the last part of my demo and our presentation. Uh, so the feature, so firmware management for Cumulus IoT is available since 0.10.0 release as CTY firmware plugin service. And as of today, only child devices are supported. And also the child device connector program uh, must be run on the child devices. If you are interested in this feature, uh, we have how to guide, so please need this one and try it. And also this child device connector program, we have it in this repository. So since IO example repository, so also you can use it. Okay, and then thanks for listening. This is end of my presentation and over to you, Phil.